Okay, guys. Sorry about the format. This is going out to uh, Ronald Ng. Uh, the, not that one. That's my own video. Oh, that's my model there. If you look at this title here, this is one of my models trying to predict the failure mode here. But Ronald, I, I started to write you a message here and said I wouldn't be able to get the video done. You know what? I'm, I'm just going to get this video partially done for you and hopefully you'll, uh, I can delete this message and you'll follow it or, or track what I'm following. Instead of going with the rings as overling, overling, I think that's the way they spelled it. Um, can you just model the carbon fiber only? Because the rings, we, we don't really know how the, the segments are shaped. You don't have the exact detail, so it's it, it's taking liberty. Um, yeah, it's got the profile of it. But the carbon fiber, that's known. The modulus of the materials, etc., from the glue to the um, the uh, Touré 800S, uh, um, is it? 800 uh, Touré T800S. That's, no, that's a known. We know that they were laid loose in the horizontal position. Um, and hoop-wise, they were laid taut. And we don't know to what position, what I mean by taut. The definition of uh, laid with tension. They also laid in half-inch strips. Um, they said they had a cut to half-inch strips. So it's, it's like they had a roll that they decided to shred up. Which is very interesting because how's that fiber? The, the fiber and fibers really makes me wonder about that since they said they had it cut, not that it came that way. Um, but I do like the idea behind half inch strips because you get uh, carbon um, epoxy on it. Every half inch you're getting epoxy um, um, interface side, uh, lateral, the lateral gluing of it. The, and it lays it down just like scotch tape, if you will. Really, really nice. So it's getting that epoxy bond from one to the next, and then there is some overlap because it's on a skew when you go back and forth. They obviously just can't do it in hoop. Um, they could do it if they make a million single strips, you know, 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree to the, to the, uh, um, the insert, uh, to the, uh, yeah, my brain's frozen, frozen inserts, the other one goes inside, to the mandrel. But I think they did it, they spun it, and so it gets skewed just a little bit as they're going, as they're going back and forth. And then two layers of that, skew one, skew the other direction, and then loose laid um, horizontally. Um, um, it's not horizontal, is it? It's, uh, yeah, my brain's fried. Let's move on. Um, so I think you could do the carbon fiber vessel much better, including the first V1. Can you predict V1's failure? Because that was made in one, one go around. That was not made in multiple layers of five layers, which, which might be complicated for you to model. Um, and where the V1, since we know how it fails, how it looks like, um, V1 would be probably a better, a better one for you to model, but just the carbon fiber only, not the... Uh, you don't have to worry about the interface rings. Let's see how it behaves at the edges, at the ends, at the ends rather. Do they come buckle first? Now I've got a surprise video right here coming up. I'm going to throw it in this one, but before I do, I want to clarify some things for people. This is, uh, they did have a torque wrench. The person did use a torque wrench when they were bolting it up. The report states that that the uh, two of these bolts were in place on this uh, segment here, which is known as the F segment. We call it an interface ring, but we're going to call it their language, so we're all on the page of the report, F segment. Two bolts are in place, even though it's, it's gappy there. So now I don't. Now this means I don't have to worry about uh, looking for this to spin in relationship to the bottom dome. And we have the forward dome here. This is tracking at 189 degrees, I, um, 189 heading this way. So it's in the middle, shift to your left. So that's 189. And this one is right about here is the back side. If this is 12 o'clock, this is around 10 o'clock is the bottom of this one is of, of the forward dome so there's the bottom there and over here is the um bottom here so it's it did a at least one turn a half a turn because the bottom's not over here it's there and how do i know that i went i looked at the headings i actually was able to freeze it around 200 heading of 200 and 
recall the heading from here being at 200. It was like 202 I stopped it at. And I was able to go, okay, that's 200. That's what it looks like. And now looking at the heading here, 200, when you look at the film. So when you look at, not that one, uh, which is also pretty telling. Here's is 90 degrees, so you'll be able to figure out where heading 200 is on this. And I wanted to map that for you on a, on a map when I get around to it, guys. But be patient with me. I've got other things to do. Um, so this is that segment that is, is in place where it belongs. So that's the top. Where is the, it should be another one over here. The top should be here, port starboard. Okay, so on the other side then, the other shackle. Uh, for lifting shackle. Yeah, that's the bottom because that's the, right there, is the nodal, uh, the whole penetrations. Um, it was, I had another video I put in the other channel maybe. It was the, um, uh, they talk about how they release it. The, uh, Morton does. That's the electrician. He states how they first released the, the, the weights, the, the undercarriage, if you will, but not the legs. That all that is capable of coming off. And then their legs. Now I want you to realize when they say drop two weights. Where's the photograph? Please be present. Please make it easy for me. When they say drop two weights. You see this is hooked here. This is. Let me slow the mouse down. This is welded. And there's. This is one. This is one group of weights. And there's three of them. So they couldn't be speaking of dropping two weights. And, the, and meaning only one, one of these got dropped. If you're saying drop two weights, um, and you can't drop individually here, right? You see, there's a total of one, uh, one weight, but combines three weight, uh, three three lengths of steel, uh, st steel tube here, tack weld and tack weld and tack weld and tack weld and tack weld, combining one one set right there. I think the intent of this clip here is if you roll the vessel, rock it and roll it, this will roll off in case you're um, drop weight system doesn't work you can rock the vessel pr present it to us for another uh, video where somebody said they had a rock to get the weights off that would rock that off of course it would probably hit here and hit the skid um, on its way out unless you get lucky when you rock it it's on an inclination that lets you clear this when it falls free that's a thought for you now I'm going to have a beautiful little um, oh, let me come back to this one I think it was bear with me that's a report going. So it's um. So there it is. There, see that? That's a heading of uh 202. Okay, that's about where I came up with. See 200. Oh wow, I'm actually 202 is perfect, guys, because I, I didn't have that. It's still image. I didn't look at that one. So that's 202, and that's the bottom. When you navigate, uh, well, let's do it. Let's do that then. Let's navigate that video. Great. These are stills. I'm looking for the video. Oh, he's back here. Shit. Um, so bear with me while I grab that video. Uh, ROV, is it this one? Operating footage, Titan, submersible, tail cone, nope. Um, salvage. Salvage. So we comes up on it we're going to freeze it at 202 they already froze it at 202 so we already know where that is so i don't really we don't really care about that let's see if we can get closer this one see the bottom heading let's see if i can pause it close i think we get a little closer 191 Right there. Ah, oh, come on, really? I'm waiting for the white line to go away. Ah, shit, really? So that's 202, so that's alignment with that one. If you could bring them over, slide them over, you would know where it looks like. And we know what it looks like at this one. All right, so that's shit. All right, watch right here while I, bring the, while I clear it. Ah, shit. Um, that's 220, that's 232, now I want 202, hold on, and let's go 195, so just a little bit more, a little more, a little more turn, it's 202, 
and we have the orientation we know that's that oxygen tank but the uh here's the here is the yep i'm trying to confirm so let me get this right this is the bottom right here let's go to this let's go to the images now the stills yep bear with me so the starboard bottoms over here um Starboard, port, starboard, bottom, so that's the top, because there's the shackles. All right, so I'm trying to get myself oriented from there. I'm going through tabs, sorry. Um, where's the damn shackle? There's the oxygen tank. I think they're going to spin back around on that. There's 208, 209. And there's the interface ring. This is the bottom. That's the uh, pen hole penetrations right here. So that's the bottom. But the bottom over here is presented to us in that image. Um, it's at 202. Is it this one? Hold on, I don't want to lose track of the imagery. At 202, that's that one again. All right, so I'm going to go back three. Hold on, wait for it. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. So I'm going to scroll to the okay, we got a heading of 273. Yep, and that says the bottom, and there's that two pieces there. And you saw we were at 202. Oh, this one doesn't have the heading, the other one did. But this is this is a different view, this wouldn't be 202 anyway. The heading would not be 202. The point I'm making is that's the bottom here, this is the bottom. That's the whole penetration here, and here, and... Right over here would be where one of the bracket, the bracket would be. And I can't make it out. I cannot make it out. Um, the left, the uh, port side bracket. I mean, is it there? I mean, the other one I showed sheared off. But is that port side bracket? Is it here? Remember they said two bolts. The report states that two of these bolts are still in place. So the bolts here for the, the, the this dome, it says two bolts are still in place. Is that the bracket there? Is it part of it right there? Is it just ripped ripped downwards? It's right here. This is uh, you know, I'm, I'm reaching, but is it metal or is it is it part of the? Uh, is it metal right here? Which would be part of the bracket, the uh, the the it's approximately where the bracket should be, right there, ninety degrees from here to here, and that might be our bracket. On the other side, there's no bracket presented. All right, now stick with me here. Stick with me here. I want to show you. Um, I should have that part highlighted. I think it still might maintain highlighting. Okay, hold on. I just jump out of report. Here we go. So we know about the larger piece. Let's move on from that one. Yeah, see, it says port. And right there would be our. Is that where a bracket would be? Or up a little higher? No, I think they. I think that's where the where it was and it sheared off. Let's see hole penetration. Oh fuck me! Look, the other hole penetration is clearly not not connected. See, there's one, two. There's one here, and I believe that's another. I think it had two on each side. This one is now in this image. 
I don't see it. Is it sheared off? Hmm. And I like to see the nuts up close. A little better shot than that. But there's these two still in place. But this one looks like it's a... Uh, Looks like it's, it took extra stage right also during this whole uh, implosion. All right. Let's go with... Uh, it's not what I wanted to show you. So I know it's going to be hard for you, Doc, to do the uh, this layer thing. But maybe maybe the other one won't be. But we don't, know what we don't know the modulus of that material. I don't think we do. V1. V2, you know, you, the, wow, you, to do all those layers, going to be kind of complicated for you. But maybe just in general, just do it with just hoop only and see how it behaves. Yeah, how about that? How about if you just do it with hoop only and see how it behaves? Just hoop only. And here's the crazy thing is that um, it's equal pressure everywhere. So you'd have to put, you know, an end cap on it, I guess, to do your modeling, some type of end cap. And I would say a very... Weak end cap, if you're going to do it, nothing to support. So just enough to keep the, the, the pressure at bay. So it's almost like you're just going to put an end cap internal to it. Internal at the edge, I guess for your modeling reasons. But very weak, nothing that's really strong. And then what happens if you make it excessively strong? So a solid piece of billet. That goes from one, all the way around the inside there. Now where's the failure, failure happen is what I'm, I'm asking you. So if you could just do your model and put a solid billet in there instead of an interface ring. Can you can you stick a solid billet inside the um, the, the hull? Right up to the, right in there and come in only an inch and a half approximately is all they came in. right? And when you look at the small model, it's only an inch and a half. So come in an inch and a half. Uh, the, the the scale model. So, oh, no, that was one-third scale. That's weird. Yeah, so uh, I'm still sticking with, sticking with that. I think it's a half an inch. or um, Yeah, I think it used a half. So it would be an inch and a half. So um, what happens if you use a larger billet? I mean, a solid billet there, a plug. And then what happens if you use, if you go out to three inches of the plug and then a four-inch plug, making your interface ring come deeper into the hull, how does it profile in the failure? Does it still fail closer to the interface rings now, at the, what I call the critical shear zone, where anything transfers from? I think of everything as a, a, a tributary zone. So the hull um, would be where, it's anchor, where it gets its support. In this case, it would be the, uh, the solid billets. It's that's a critical shear zone. And I think of everything between there is tributary between each one, but a gradient, of four, a gradient, meaning the further you span them apart, of course, the weaker it would be on their normal point loading. But in this case, it's not point loading. It is supported underneath, but not inside, obviously. But it's your radius. It's, it becomes an arch. So I don't know if your software can do arches, brickwork arches, but a continuous arch is how I see that, visualize this, a radius, a continuous arch under pressure, except for it. One of these arch, in this arch system, this brick arch system, if you will, that's continuously round, um, that it has a few fractured bricks is what it amounts to. Uh, now, where the hell is the, what I wanted to show you? Um, I think it's, uh, oh, that's the search field, guys. It's, it's huge, and they went a lot more southeasterly than, uh, than uh, you can imagine. They had a lot of assets there. Um, where I'm looking for something that says uh, uh, the, the two bolts. I'm just going to show you where it says two bolts are still on the vessel. Oh, you know what? So there it is. You know, it's, it's rotating around, so it's going to be uh, askew. It's not actually just 90 degree hooped. It slides down and slides back, and it puts it a slight bit of uh, skew. I don't know what speed it is, but it gives it a thread, if you will. Yeah, like I said, we, we can't really profile this. Look, we don't have access. You don't have access to this. Plus, I found, and I got an image that I have to share. They were welding on it. I don't know what they were welding, but they were welding a, a bead, a huge-ass bead on top of the uh, one of the segments of the image I can share with that. And then we have these divots inside here, not here, another video. It's over the back of the hull. Their aft segment, 
uh, nope, it's the aft dome. It's got a huge amount of drilled or divots in it. Um, it was after machining. It's on the other side. It's it's real weird. And then this band goes over it, and so it's not evident to us. Incidentally, that band is not presented to us anywhere, and it looks like a band, right? But in reality, it's the bolts. And I keep referring to it as a band, and then and I realize I'm in here. Um, the uh, oh, and this, for noteworthy, this is not a change of uh, of um, of the flotation device by by color. It's just been painted. That was found in notes. They just painted it. Uh, insert right. Um, something down here I wanted to show you. Show you beautiful people. V1, I actually saw a V1 where they screwed the motors to the carbon fiber. In this case, they're screwing it to the um, shrouds, the fairings as it's known as, which is just craziness. There are also holes in the backside of that metal, which makes you wonder if they screw all the way through. Zachary and I talked about that. Zachary's a mechanical engineer. We banter about, we banter about a lot. And then... Um, we have our, this, this right here, this one here. Let's see, max, maximize the imagery. So here, drop cylinder weight system. Okay, and this says drop landing gear. Interesting, uh, the terminology. And then this is one of the versions of it, I'm guessing. Uh, I don't know what version this is, but just sharing that with you. Um, what else was on there? That was that. So now I'm going to have a little fun with you and oh, too bad I can't pull up my model showing that I talk about the Titan and, 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 and took a spinning. Titan, submersible, um, uh, twerk, uh, how about that? Let's see if I come up and searches on that. Um, nope. Hey, welcome to the world of my world of putting out content and you can't find it. How about that? Spin. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Um, nope. Titan Smersible, uh... Um, interface rings prove it, um, how about rotate it? Nope, I'm going to define it in my own, oh, there you are. I'm going to define it in my own, um, content. Well, here I am here. It's about the rear end falling off. Let's see if I got that right. Yep, there's the... Now, see here, the, the, there's the two um, on the left side. Uh, port, starboard side. Hmm. Yeah, the bracket's clearly off. All right, for fun now, we're going to get into... So, you guys, you're going to come to Dr. Ronald's channel over here. And here's his latest video on the, on the uh, submersible. It's uh, a lot of technical stuff. You can enjoy it. Um, but now I'm going to have a little fun. So somebody sent me this link saying, would I look at it? I said, sure. Four years ago they made it. And he said, what do I think of it? It's kind of related to the Titan. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, I don't know. Let's see. So he, the guy makes a pipe up. All right, makes his pipe, puts it, well, I don't know if you welded that or not. And then he's got an end cap and he's going to put fluid in here. And then he's, he's going to put a chicken leg inside this pipe. So let's look at it. There's this pipe. Well... Oh. That was weird. The standard galvan Let me pause it. I mean, a volume. I'm just going to do a narration over it. So then, um, okay, so he welds it. There's his connection. Um, he's going to put a chicken leg in it. So I ask him, when he puts this chicken leg in there, what's, what's it going, what's going to happen to the chicken leg? Now, this matters. Dr. Ing Ronald, check this out. It matters. Think of that chicken leg. No, I don't want to give that part about. But what's going to happen to his chicken leg? He's going to energize it up to uh, 
2300 PSI. He's going to drop his chicken leg in. Wait a minute. Let me see him drop the chicken leg in. Yeah. Let me see him drop the chicken leg in. Come on, drop the chicken leg. Oh, you already had it out. Hold on. There's a the chicken leg. All right. So you just dropped it in. You saw the chicken leg. There's the chicken leg. All right. So he tightens it up. He puts it inside here. And he charges it to 2,300 pounds. Let's see if I can get you a screenshot of that. Okay, there we go. Seems like he's got a lot of... It's dropping back pretty fast. He, his pressure won't maintain. But he made it to 2,300. And then he takes it off. So I'm asking you, what will it look like? What will this chicken leg look like when he pulls it out? It had 2,300 PSI inside there. It's just a chicken leg. I tell you what I thought it would look like. I thought it would be pretty compressed, maybe maybe uh, a little bit deformed, like mm, like um, like uh, um, like you put it in your hand and you squeezed it, but exaggerating out the twenty three hundred psi. But this is the part that I talk about that all pressure it's being equal, that some things can't buckle, and. Think of it as buckling. Now, here he goes. Let's see what he thinks. This is what he thinks. Let's, let's hear his volume, what he thinks it looks like before he does it. Hopefully we are surprised, but it's possible nothing happened, but I really doubt that nothing happened. Because with 2,000 pounds of pressure, you would think that the flesh on that chicken leg would be completely mushed. So let's take a look. Okay, let me take it and dump it out. And looking inside, guys, it looks almost the way it did going down. Watch this. Look at this. The only difference is it got really mushy, which I expected because of all that pressure. But I thought it would have been a lot worse. I thought... Isn't that amazing? So, isn't that amazing? I want you now to think of that chicken skin as the, as the rhino liner. Remember, we, we theorized, and I theorized, that it could, rhino liner could allow water to come under, and it could peel it off. No. That's chicken skin. I've peeled off chicken skin with my bare hands. And I didn't use 2,300 pounds of force or 2,000 pounds of force. I just peeled it off. So as the pressure comes up, it, it, it hits this chicken leg equally everywhere. Think of the rhino liner. And even though it can get under here, it does not because the pressure outside is maintaining it tight to over here. It's equal. Not one is greater than the next. So let's say it's a thousand pounds here. Well, it's also a thousand pounds here. It's resisting the peeling effect, if you will. It can't peel it up because a thousand pound fighting a thousand pounds is a is a squash. It's a wash. So it can't peel it up. And that's what I was worried about when I said, can it peel it up? Theoretically, can it? And then I had the dome. Theoretically, can the dome, let's look at this dome, can the, the dome, is it really, is it really a piston? Um, so this, I want to draw the, uh, I want to give you, this will be the shell, the, uh, the, where they are, and then I'll put the domes on the end, the ends here, can, you know what, I'll do two circles, and then I'll move them in. So, let's just pretend like that, a half circle there. I only use it from this line to there, half of it. I don't think I can move this over to get a half. Not really. So can this really, um, with the with the with the pressure, the oops, arrows. So with the uh, with the pressure like this, right? It's trying to drive this into here. So right here is where it wants to. Right there is a point where it will, let's change the colors. Right there is where it wants to get, it's a force, it's, it's getting multiple forces. So from this direction, it's getting 5,000 PSI, right? Oops, sorry. 5,000 PSI. But from this direction, is it getting 5,000 PSI? Um... Is it really getting 5,000 psi? As I as I show you the half dome, all right. Let's sorry about that shape. It's a half dome. Is it really getting? So we're getting pressure coming this way. Yeah, that just hit blend to blend too much, didn't it? 
is it really getting is it getting pressure like that is the surf what's the surface area and think of it really just think of it as a hydraulic say surface area counts is it getting 5,000 and if so how much of it is is being countered by um, how much of this is being countered by this force also of 5,000 coming down and whatever is coming of that force and then we have a force like this how much of that is holding it up from this piston driving in it's not actually inside a, a chain it's not actually in a, a, um, a cylinder it's outside the cylinder so it's got 5,000 pounds it's trying to push through PSI it's trying to go through there but it's also got 5,000 pounds in the surface area here trying to drive it trying to close up inside this shell here trying to close this void inside here the ocean is but how much of it is actually being countered on here how much force is actually really making it into like a cylinder action which means here it's going to resolve itself around the interface ring or the segment is called around the edge how much is it actually doing that so when you do your modeling please uh dr ing ronald don't have any force coming in from the ends put zero force on the ends but only force only force on the um outside outside of it here but here it can't move because you're going to put up uh, a plug inside here and so there'll be no so no no putting a force this direction that would be the ocean and it would act like a cylinder and we don't want that well just for this modeling but what would it look like if you just loaded this all equally everywhere and as far as it peeling off you see guys don't have the water pressure itself doing it with this chicken leg it just cancels out this is that one that i did a video a long time ago about this how much of it is actually canceling out since it's outside the vessel now how much is this actually acting like a surface area that's that's also saying no we're going to act as as a as a skin friction like you're putting a um a damn um post in the ground a, a pile in the ground at the beach it's got skin friction how much is that is actually skin friction you see the compressive clamp it's like a clamp force five thousand here a little more than the bottom it's a gradient right this vessel is so high it will be just a little bit more at the bottom than the top so but let's round up to even five thousand each way here's five thousand here here's five thousand here is that ten thousand pounds to combine and then do it in a radial form all the way around and then is it acting like a, a, the beach system, a, um, a pile system, where you've got all this resistance that you can't, that it can't lift up, that the pile can't go through? So how much is it really, um, is, is this a wash? Is it, should you discount it? I, I, I don't think you could. If I was a human in there, I wouldn't be able to discount it, right? It'd be 5,000 pounds crushing my chest one way and 5,000 pounds trying to push my head into my ass if this is my head, right? So, uh, but if you equally load it, how much of it becomes a wash? Like the chicken leg. I, I still have this, this coming in, and it's just radial, so it, it'll, but, but then that's there, but is it canceled out? Is it canceled out, that pressure there, it's in there. It all wants to come in here. Just If you could just open, the, if this could be a valve and you open it, it would just flush all in this way, right? Every which way, flushing in. But it's not a valve. It's, it's this. Think of it like that pile now. How much of this is resistance for the part that wants to drive it in? Coming back to the leg, look at that leg. It's oil. I, I wish you would have cut it and see how much infused, how deeply infused the oil might have gone. I guess if he knew the volume of the of the oil he was putting in, he could measure it again. If you could take it all out, measure it, and you'd know how much was infused. But I don't think he measured it, and now he's got it here. But never, that's okay if you measured it. Uh, it makes me want to almost make this make this one up myself. This is very interesting um, to make this up. I've got the oil. I've got, I can make this up no problem at all. And 2,000 PSI of my equipment. 
I can go way more than that. Um, but my hoses would limit me. So it's interesting, but no peeling back. It did not peel back. So think of that as a carbon fiber. As it goes down, the pressure increased. It just couldn't do it. It, it, it countered it. So I'm ending the video with that and something that, you know, you, you, don't, you don't think of. You think that chicken would have uh, had, even though it's pressure all the way around it, you think the chicken would have, uh, how do you guys think? You think it would have crushed it down a little bit more, made it a little more compact? You know, it, it's, it's flesh, it's fluid, um, but you think it might have pulled it away from the bone? You know, what's going on here? Very interesting, right? All right, so I'm ending the video, and uh, this one going out to uh, you guys. Go over to his channel. Hopefully, he'll do that model for us. I wrote another one here. Forget that interface one, uh, Ronald. This one here I wrote. Um, I'm going to delete it, in fact. So you can pause it if you guys want to see what the comment is. Wait a minute. Let me show you the full comment, and then I'll delete it. Wish them a good night. The cat say hi to his birds. He's got some birds. All right, deleting. Oops. So let's delete that. And then uh, um, I'll delete this one too, Ronald. And then I'm just going to send you a link to this video. Um, oh. oh, I never posted it. All right, so cancel. Um, yeah, that was my initial question right here. Um, but no, I think it would be better because it would be unfair to you to, with all that modeling time. But what happens if you just model the, the carbon fiber with plugs at the end with no pressure coming in at the end? How's this behave? Is it going to shear? Shear there. Wherever you think you know, you big make the plug. And will it or will it shear there in the other end? Or if you can put a defect in there and your layers. I don't know if that complicated that is. You have to pick one spot. I visualize it's punching through. That it's making one zone where it can punch through because of their, the way they did their, uh, their layup and sanding. Um... But there's that. There is that. And then, of course, with your larger plug, can you, you're you going to start off hopefully with a smaller plug, um, a one-and-a-half-inch one inch plug, and see if it um, shears at that location there. Or does it do the, uh, there's a buckle in the, in the center somewhere first. The chicken didn't buckle, and it's tapered off. Um, did it, does it buckle in the center? Uh, of course, um, it, it's hollow here. But again, it, it's, it's a brick, let me do that, brick arch. A brick, brick radius um, arch. That's kind of weird to say it like that, but. Um, so, let's see, uh, this one. I just look at the right screen. This one here. Continuous pressure all the way around. All right. The chicken leg or whatever. Continuous pressure is what I said it should be visualized as. Not like Bart Kemper stated that it's a beam. It's not a beam. It's continuous. Oh, here's a perfect little wedge there showing you uh, the idea behind it. But it would be like this. Pressure all the way around. Of course, there's going to be a, um, a, a neutral axis somewhere in here with the pressure on it as you increase pressure. But ideally, this is so tight that uh, it can't separate. So it doesn't meet its neutral axis with the pressure being applied to it. But obviously in this system, it did. They can only, they can only pressurize it to uh, 320 PSI or something like that. No, yeah. I think the, uh, the, uh, the place where they took it to be um, autoclave, I think it goes up to 320? I think it's 320 degrees. Oh, maybe that's what it was. I forget how many PSI it can do, but... It doesn't do what they're putting it down there. And so the fiberglass, um, fiberglass, the epoxy fails. So one more thing. I want to do a model, which I've been working on in my mind. I haven't done it yet. I've got some carbon fiber. I want to clamp it at two ends, loosely, clamp it firmly, but lo have it loose as they do in the, uh, I keep wanting to say horizontal, in the um, diagonal direction. And the um, diagonal <sighs> yeah, my brain's frozen. Um, as they do it in the opposite, the opposing 90-degree direction, 90-degree-ish direction. Incidentally, it, 
it's skewed when they land it on two layers, left and right. It's still skewed. But when they do the other ones, do they do they wrap it in, like that? Kept going around and around with this device. No, the device doesn't look like it can do a radius like that. It would it would be cutting strips um, with their equipment. Where the hell is it? Looking to the left. Sorry. Hey Max, want to give a shout out? Max, you want to give a shout out to everybody? Let's see if he gives a shout out. So there's 220, 202, um, and that's the bottom. So you can do the same thing with the other one. Here's this one at roughly the same heading, 193. And here's the bottom. So you can see here's the bottom at 202 heading. And now this heading is 193, and here's our bottom over here. There was a rotation going on, a torque that took place during this failure. As it's closing in on one side of that, and I showed you in the other model, as it closes in, as it breaks, punches through one section of this buckles um, of the arch, if you will, that continuous radius arch, the pressure's still there. It's the ocean. It's got plenty of backup pressure. It's not like you got to add an extra hand pump, another stroke of the hand pump to get more pressure going. It's got it. And it starts folding in. As it folds in, it takes a twist. It rotates and twerks. And this is where you uh, twist, let's say. And this is where you get your curly cues. And your rotation happens where you're able to shear off the screws. And incidentally, on this picture here, I'll go back over it again. I wanted to show it in another video. The, the angle of incidence here implies that it was it slid into is where, is this where snow, a snow pile that stocked up. And that's also where one of the um, um, interface legs would be. And I can't, you believe it? I can't tell. I don't think it's there because I think it would be much larger here. I don't think it's there either. It's missing off of this one also. There's the bottom, and that would be the uh, front. Let's see, bottom, so forward, yeah. So this would be your yeah, starboard side. This would be the hinge side. I'm sorry. So that would be the way the hinges would... Mm, you, you button it up. Yeah, that's what a hinge, the door hinge would be. And it's not presented to us. It's, it's, so, it's, the, it's, it's an amazing failure. Um, and, but the snow plowing, see how you can see the bottom of it over here? And then all of a sudden the sand goes up higher. And then back down again. Now look inside. The back wall has a little bit of height on it. But over here it looks like it's a lot more um, reveal. So it, it probably came, slid in the base just in a slight, it was very close to the bottom, in other words, I'm saying. The dish just didn't, didn't just fall down. It, and there was some sliding action going on. Unless they came over there with the vessel and they blew this sand into this upper part here. That it slid. Not much. And it slid just a little bit. So the angle of incidence has this implosion way down low. And up top is where we have the, um, the uh, initial failure. And I think they were aborting, like I said. And here's the, here's the rest of the, see the curly cue, I call it? This little thing here. And here's the rest of it here. And I guess it might go back to there. But it, it twists. It, it, rotated, it rotated out. I showed it with a Lysol can when I showed this. And I can't find that video, my Lysol can video with that. And this didn't escape me, these, these blue, uh, whatever they are. They, they've not escaped my thinking. Um... Along with the uh, the white. So ending video and coming finally think about that. Isn't that beautiful? So you don't get the 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 so the, you do not get the carbon fiber peeling off just because we get a a um, a, uh, a leak in the carbon fiber. If I took a knife and scraped it, if I if I took a saw a hand saw and cut right through the the um, the uh, line, rhino liner. Based on this chicken leg, it would not peel off. It would not skip under the skin and start peeling it off and causing an issue. What do you guys think? Am I wrong? Am I right? Makes sense? I want you not to echo chamber, but think about it. You can echo chamber if you come to the same conclusion. And again, come over to Ronald's channel. Let's see if he's still, if I got the right channel up. Um, maybe he's up here. I think you just look up Dr. Ng, and there you go. Boom. There you go. So, uh, there we go right there. All right. Take care, guys. Love you. Bye. I'm out.
Oh, thanks for your cat support. And as always, never send me any money. I don't need any money. Just um, the cats, though. You can send the cat love. Send the cat some love. Send them some uh, cat love or whatever. If you feel like it, don't have to do it at all. Um, and like I keep saying, I'm up to two raccoons I've not seen in a couple days. So that's interesting. Uh, two other cats. I haven't seen the white cat in a while. I missed that cat. I wonder if somebody adopted him. Um, but two more cats are showing up. The same two cats. So it's a gray one and another one. Um, the fox I have not seen in a while either. So it gets a little, you know, we're going curves. And before I hang up, let me take a look at my camera and see if anything's out there. What I do is I have a camera on the food and I can see if the bowl, the, the dish is empty. And since I am have insomnia, I can fill up the dish all through the night as I choose. And we got a little bit of food left, so we did have a customer, but they left some food on the table. <laughs> all right, take care, guys. Love you. Bye.